And thank you to the organizers for your kind invitation. It is uh, good to be back in Baku and to see the uh, marvelous changes since the last time, not so many years ago, and to hope to be back again still sooner than next. The uh, title of my remarks uh, today is Azerbaijan in Central Eurasia, the evolution of its geoeconomic situation, which sounds very academic, but uh, it's really going to be about policy with a few general remarks to begin. Uh, what I have to say will continue an analysis begun in my article in Azerbaijan Focus three years ago, expanded for a book chapter published by Glenn Howard and Fariz uh, Ismailzadeh last year, both of whom I'm very happy to see here today. Uh, but if you haven't read it, that's fine, because I'm going to say things today mostly that you won't find there, uh, and you don't really need the background there. That's what the general remarks are actually going to be about. To take a broad view to start, uh, one uses the term uh, unprecedented a lot these days. And one of the things that is truly unprecedented about uh, this part of the world today is that Russia and Turkey are both strong states and they have friendly relations. That has never happened before in the history of the region. Certainly not since 1713 when the Treaty of Utrecht established the international state system unified the international state system in Europe. Uh, it's difficult in the neighborhood, as they say, as was said, that also Russia and Turkey are both today revisionist powers, meaning that they wish to revise the quote-unquote peace settlement of the last war, which happened to be a peace with the Cold War, it wasn't a shooting war. But they both wish to revise what came out of that, the end of the post-Cold War era, uh, and uh, some people would say that Turkey wishes to revise the first post-World War I settlement. I won't get into that. Uh, but also Iran wishes to revise the post-Cold War settlement or perhaps even the settlement of a still earlier war. All of this makes it a very difficult place to be uh, here uh, as a small country. The choice of the Trans-Adriatic Pipeline over Nabucco West introduces an element of equilibrium into what I should call the Greater Southwest Asian Hydrocarbon Energy Complex, which basically is constituted by the triangle Azerbaijan, Russia, and Turkey. A triangular approach to looking at these things is important because it overcomes the emphasis on bilateralism, which is outdated in a networked world and it provides the building block for network analysis. In fact, the triangles can be embedded. For example, Azerbaijan, Georgia, and Turkey is a triangle of obvious uh, material significance that is embedded in the Azerbaijan, Turkey, uh, Russia triangle, and so on. And there are further examples in Central Asia that uh, I uh, shan't uh, uh, bother you with. However, <clears throat> the choice of the TAP over Nabucco West means that at least for the time being, there will be no cohesive greater South, Euro South European, sorry, there will be no cohesive greater Southeast European complex, which would include the East Balkans. I'm speaking of the complex that would arise from the creation of a fully reversible gas ring, as was discussed uh, in the days when Nabucco was not yet dead. Uh, and which is still a project perhaps for the future. Also, the absence of gas from Azerbaijan in this region means that the links between a greater Southeast European complex and an East Central European complex will not take place, at least not involving Azerbaijan and Turkey as vertices, as points of this triangle. Perhaps in the future again, but not for the present. Now, elsewhere, I have set out in detail an anal analytical summary that I do not repeat here concerning the evolution of the Greater Southwest Asia Triangle. Basically, 1993 to 1998, 1999 to 2004, and 2005 to 2010. I won't bore you with the details that uh, support uh, this uh, analysis, 
Uh, and what comes after 2010, I shall get to soon and in conclusion. But these three phases in the evolution of energy relations, that's what it is, a hydrocarbon energy complex, energy relations in this part of the world, uh, three phases may be designated that the three periods represent. And these phases are emergence, self-direction, and cohesiveness. Now, I think that this audience can instinctively understand on the basis of its familiarity with the facts on the ground, uh, the common sense basis for such a periodization, uh, which is not based only upon the history of the BTC pipeline, uh, but which is its principal uh, example. Uh, it is perhaps not so surprising that this periodization of 93 to 98 99 to 2004 and 2005 to 10 also accurately characterizes the evolution of the formation and deployment of Azerbaijan's national interests. One of the things that is clear is that in the post-Cold War world with the analytical emphasis on triangular relations is the importance of networking and international networking even for states and the multivectoral export policy of Azerbaijan is paralleled also by Kazakhstan's over the last 20 years illustrating the point. But it is necessary to go beyond the immediate neighborhood of Russia, Turkey, and Iran in order to assure the stability of Azerbaijan and the realization of its national interests. Azerbaijan has begun and should and will continue these vectors, those vectors of its network, uh, for example, beyond Russia, Turkey, and Iran to the south uh, is its develop deepening relations with Israel. To the west, Azerbaijan has sought, as I mentioned, to promote exports across the Black Sea, either compressed or liquefied natural gas to Bulgaria, the Agri project, and one or two others, also including Ukraine and oil. Uh, and these may happen in the further time, but they will not have a structuring influence on how things will evolve between now and then. This brings me to the eastern direction, southwest and eastern direction across the Caspian Sea. There could have been a possibility, of course, to establish an Azerbaijan-Kazakhstan-Turkmenistan triangle, but this has not happened. And it is fair to say that it is uh, not foreseeable, it is not going to happen in the foreseeable future. I wish to suggest that it is nevertheless appropriate at this time in the evolution of Azerbaijan's national interest to pursue the deepening of relations with the Central Asian countries, even if this does not today include significant energy trade in the first instance. Recall the three periods I mentioned, 1993 to 98, 99 to 2004, and 2005 to 2010. Emergence, self-definition, and cohesiveness. These together represent only one metaphase of emergence including what we are now into is a broader phase of the self-direction of Azerbaijan's international conduct that has now been entered for the last few years. And we can even say that as a sub-phase, we are now in the stage of the definition, not the analytical definition, but the deployment and the implementation in life itself of the emergent self-definition of Azerbaijan's I'm sorry, Yes, the emergent self-definition of Azerbaijan's national interests. At such a stage of development, the establishment of the international network of relations, interstate relations, of course there are inter-societal relations and so on, but states conduct state-to-state -state relations, and not just an aggregation of bilateral relations. This network must become and will become uh, significant for Azerbaijan, not just the Azerbaijan-Turkey-Russia Triangle, and not just the Azerbaijan-U.S. bilateral relations, but as I said, extending south to Israel and beyond, perhaps west to the European Black Sea states and eastward to Central Asia, can be thought as, uh, as, as bringing a stability to Azerbaijan in its own turbulent Russia, Iran, Turkey region. These are like uh, ropes that secure the uh, trampolines and the vibrations of the near area and that help to secure Azerbaijan in its own place in the middle of it all. Also such a network may create an identity of policy that becomes itself then a, f a fertile ground for new developments, unforeseeable at present, that may take root. And this is a reciprocal process to extend such relations and in turn to be nourished by them. I might suggest that uh, Azerbaijan should th would think 
perhaps he is thinking already, of focusing on Kazakhstan in the first instance without forgetting the others because Kazakhstan is and will continue to be the geo-economic driver in Central Asia uh, for a number of reasons that uh, should be self-evident. Also, Azerbaijan and Kazakhstan have certain clear similarities, not just industrial, but also some cultural similarities that makes the development of such relations a kind of a common sense at this stage where Azerbaijan now disposes of the means to undertake the relations, which it could not do earlier. Moreover, as Kazakhstan becomes more and more squeezed between Russia and China and conscious of it, as they already are, as the, as the domestic political situation in Kazakhstan becomes increasingly unclear as it already starts for some time, and as the United States has largely withdrawn attention from the region, certainly curtailing it as a, as a strategic region, not considering it anymore as a strategic region, it makes sense. It makes sense for Azerbaijan to put forward a foreign policy image which will be, would be self-fulfilling to become an anchor and a point of reference for an unstable Kazakhstan. As Azerbaijan's economic performance today shows that it is possible to overcome certain economic difficulties that Kazakhstan has yet to confront with complete success. I do not uh, intend to make remarks about the Central Asia, other Central Asian countries. I come already to a conclusion uh, simply to say that uh, Uzbekistan will be still a more difficult situation than Kazakhstan. Uh, Turkmenistan is another story. But to summarize, and then can summarize in one sentence and conclude in one paragraph, there is a easing of tension in greater Southwest Asia due in part to the choice of top over Nabucco. This means that certain other formations, geo-economic formations in Southeast Europe and East Central Europe will not take the shape that they could have taken. But that's how it is. Azerbaijan, and, but Azerbaijan, the link from the East to the West, will pursue those uh, links in Southeast Europe and East Central Europe when the international situation permits it. The projects are designed and they await only the proper circumstances for implementation. The resources are there. Concluding on Central Asia now, Azerbaijan is a relatively small state and that can be to its advantage. Because it is a small state, no one will suspect Azerbaijan of having a hidden agenda or having ulterior motives. So Azerbaijan represents potentially a stabilizing influence in Central Asia, drawing also upon its own cultural historical inheritance, as well as laying the groundwork for, to facilitate the east to west transit of Central Asian energy resources when the international situation will permit it. Uh, to be sure, such a new foreign policy vector in Azerbaijan international policy uh, would uh, make such a project feasible. But aside from that, such a vector towards Central Asia has now become possible on the basis of Azerbaijan's very impressive foreign policy accomplishments to the present day, and Azerbaijan is probably already looking that way and uh, deserves to be encouraged.